We are going to go ahead and continue our media availabilities for today. We're now joined by Mike Kelly, crew chief of the number 47 Chevrolet. Congratulations on your on your win today. Mike, can you tell us a little bit about the race itself? Uh, today was for us was just a, a, all about execution. You know, we we generally don't qualify well here. I think today or the, yesterday was our best qualifying effort on a speedway with a next gen car. We qualified 32nd, but we we won't compromise our race setup. And we uh, we generally have a pretty good race car for Ricky to be able to maneuver around and a lot, lot of ideas on strategy and knowing these guys are racing for a championship and who's going to get stage points. And we just kind of sat in our meeting on Thursday and said that man, we were going to try and win all the stage points and we were going to try and win the race. And it's easier said than done, but we executed well in the first first stage and I think we finished second. And uh just put a big effort into making sure that we came out of that last green flag pit stop as close to the lead as we could and um, was able to get lined up with the Chevrolet key partner group and uh, wiggle our way in amongst those guys and, and put ourselves in position at the end. And then they had that last restart there. Um, I felt pretty good about our chances just knowing we had a lot of Chevrolets behind us. And I know some of those guys were racing for points and they probably wouldn't do anything that would put themselves in harm's way. And, uh, and we got the right push when we needed and looked like Keselowski didn't get the push he needed at times and uh, squeaked it out right there at the end. Awesome. We'll go ahead and open it for questions. If you have one, please raise your hand. We'll go to Jordan right over here in the gray and then to Jeff right next to him. Jordan Bianchi, The Athletic. Um, coming to these races, you know Rick, this is Ricky Fitz, Ricky Skelsa. Is there more pressure on you guys? Because this, you feel like this is your really good opportunity to kind of leave with a W? I really, I really don't know that it's more pressure. I, I look at it as more opportunity. And, uh, you know, we, we prepare the car the same as we do whether we're going to Charlotte next week or Kansas last week. But, yeah, we, we understand our, where our chances lie, and we always want to try and make sure that we have all our T's crossed and our I's dotted and make sure we spent, we spent a lot of time on strategy and we spent a lot of time on understanding the fuel and the fuel mileage. And I hate, I hate to say that from – from an old school racer who's who's been coming here for about 30 years and and now that now that's a different part of the game is understanding fuel mileage and how to spend the least amount of time on pit road and we were doing we had done that really well on um, I think in the in the Daytona race earlier but we got bit by a caution and and that was something we hadn't thought about was saving fuel saving fuel saving fuel and then if the caution comes out and it's in the window now you're just running 25th and uh, you're not going to have track position and, and these places are are hard to pass so we, we changed that up this weekend, and we said we really got nothing to lose. Let's, let's not keep ourselves farther back than 10th or 12th. So, you know, we executed that really well in the first stage. And I thought I was proud of Ricky and Tab, our spotter. I thought we were going to try and throw a big block on Busher to win the first stage, and we didn't need to do that. We, we, we just needed to finish where it was, and we finished second. And I, and I, I thanked them both after that. I said, you know, we, we did the right thing there. We, we still got a car intact. And we got a shot at this thing at the end of the day. We just need to continue to execute. And um, I knew when we were leaving pit road, we, we had to make sure we, we we went a little conservative and said put a put an extra half a gallon in it, you know, for one green white checkered. And I knew some of the key partners weren't willing to do that. Um, but I saw how fast we we executed that stop, and it was all about beating the nine. For me, I felt like it was all about beating the nine car off pit road. He was the one that that basically was closest to us. The beat, if we didn't beat them off pit road, it, it would probably be a different day. So we got we got fortunate that we, we executed the stop and got off pit road, and it worked out for us. Uh, two more questions for me. Um, it looked like you guys had damage on the left side of the door. Um, one of the crew, crew chiefs on the, the pit road had said they thought that some foam was missing from your car and that maybe you should have had to come back down a pit road. I'm wondering if you can address that. Yeah, I bet they did. <laughs> um, I didn't see no foam missing, but, uh, yeah, no. So we did. We took a direct shot you know really hard and on this car if you want to take it somewhere it's definitely not in one of the wheels with the toe links they uh they bend for a reason and your day would pretty much be done you know if you've been a toe link so it, yeah it did it took a it took a big shot and um if, if they were going to pull us down for that they would it probably have been hard to get that car off the racetrack <laughs> uh last question for me you guys are going through a bit of a transition we know your kroger's leaving at the end of the year um, kind of, can you address where you're at for the sponsorship side? I'm of on the competition side, so yeah. I'm, I'm really, you know, I, I don't know. Um, I, I know I got a great, a great group of owners with, with Ernie and Gordon, and I just re-signed my deal for a couple of years, and I'm excited we re-signed. We have an alliance with Hendrick, 
and uh, uh, they they help us with with technical alliance and Mr. H and Jeff Gordon and Jeff Andrews and Scotty Maxim that whole group Chad Canals we're we're the little team and, and and we don't get everything we want um, they they give us what what we can and when when they can um, but. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited about the future here. We're still a small team. There's no getting around that. It's not easy. Um, but I've told everybody last year when I took this position over that I always felt like even though if I got 30 guys working on our race team, if I got 30 guys pulling in the same direction, I, I like my chances. You know, it's it's not pretty some days. There's days we want to forget about some of the races, but there are a lot of days that, man, we, we know there are other teams questioning how we do what we do when we do it. Yes, we'll sir. come down here to Jeff. Um, that last stop, do you do you have any idea how many seconds of fuel you took? I know exactly how many, 4.89. Okay. Yeah. So, and, and, and we verified that. We do that for multiple reasons, Jeff. We, we, we want to make sure, like, you pick, you pick the lap that you believe you can go wide open from there, right? And... So you, you pick that lap and you say, this from this lap, we can go wide open plus one green-white checkered. And we knew how much time we needed. And our gas man did an incredible job of staying connected to the car. We only wanted four seconds of fuel, but he did an incredible job staying connected and doing what they call riding the car out as far as he can to get that extra. So we, we were good to 197. So we, we, were, we were in solid shape there. And is that part of, like, because, I mean, I'm just assuming in some ways, even though you, you know that there could be an overtime, right? Yeah. But it's also got to be somewhat tempting to be like, man, if I take one less second here, that's that many more positions. But yeah. you, you you were determined that, hey, I'm, I got to have enough for one green white checkered. Yeah, we, we we cut it really close on the two stages today. We we tell ourselves we're, we'll shoot for three-eighths to half a gallon to finish. Um and that's just for error, right? Like we, we, we believe we have this down to a science. But the other thing we've also learned is that this pit stop racing at these super speedways is there's there's really about five or six things. It's it's coming to pit road, making sure you're 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 fast enough to the line, making sure you're hitting your your targets on on your pit road speed. Avoid it, you know, like what where you pick avoiding cars coming in and out because if you lift or, or, or on or off the gas too much and then blending back up, you're, you're trying, we're, sh we're cutting the fuel down to a half a second. So like if you lose it all coming in, and we've seen that before, we've seen it where we, we, do the, we execute the pit stop side well, but we gave up too much getting in, or we weren't, we were, we weren't leading our group and we came in late on pit road, and now we're having to dodge the cars who are already because they're all getting two or three seconds of fuel. So when we we talked about it today, I said if you're going to run up front, then I'm going to pick down at that end of pit road because it'll make it easier. I don't have to dodge cars, and it's just it's a we we have an incredible <laughs> we do have an incredible engineering group, and I'm very thankful for them. They make my job easy. That spend a ton of time on this stuff right we have we have a strong engineering group and we and they they lay it all out and we spend hours upon hours looking at this stuff so that we can execute on these days yes sir do we have any other questions for mike we'll come down here to bob um bob Pockers, fox sports i have a couple. The first, just there was some confusion on who was going to get towed to pit road and who yeah. wasn't. And like, did I mean, were you paying attention to that? Did that impact any of your decisions it, there at the end? It didn't impact our decisions. It we've got to get that cleaned up as a sport, right? Because there are teams. I be careful how I say this. There are teams with a lot on the line that are sitting out there just waiting on wreckers to get to them. And then they they did I, Bob, this is my 30th year doing this. I don't know that I've ever seen them turn the yellow flag on and allow guys to work on cars while other guys are just sitting there. And I and, I, and I'm sure they'll they'll think about that and talk about that because if you're if you're a guy who's sixth in the championship hunt and you're sitting there waiting on somebody to get to you, but the other guys are Working and maybe maybe the maybe I'm looking at it wrong and the DVP clock evens it all out. But 
I was getting confused when Ricky kept coming by saying there's still four cars sitting here. And um, I'm sure they were they were put in a tough situation with that many cars involved in that wreck and this many wreckers. And some of the guys are the, – the cars look to be damaged or in the grass. They couldn't use the airlift system. Some guys are running it. Some guys are not. So it's, it's a tough situation. And we'll, we'll learn from it and get better at it. But, yeah, I, I, it was a lot of new things kind of happening. But it, it didn't impact ours. We were, we were worried if they just ran a bunch of laps under caution. That would. And – that would have made me upset. <laughs> that was kind of my follow up. Yeah. Was like, were you, were there a certain number of laps yeah. under caution you could go before? Yeah, you were yeah, about we fuel? we were good with. We wanted to see them uh, take the green at least at one ninety five for me to be comfortable, and we took it well before that. But I just didn't know when Ricky said there was. I think he told me there was still three or four cars down there, and then I, you know, I'm listening, and he said, "Oh, the fourteen left pit road and just wrecked again or spun out again," and I. Then I heard somebody say on one of the scanners that a wheel nut fell off somebody's car, and I just kept saying, "Man, we're we're just gonna we're gonna run all this fuel out under caution, and it's, it's not gonna make my day very good." So, but they got it all cleaned up, and it and it worked out, and I'm I'm thankful for that. We'll take one final question in the back. Uh, Maxwell Dials and Gads and Times. When you see Ricky go up over the fence, just what are your thoughts of just watching him? You know, do that. He climbed from like the fence into the flag stand. Oh, he did. Back. What was your thoughts about all that? Man. Uh, I didn't get to see it, but for those of you that know or don't know, man, my, me and Ricky's got a long, long tenure relationship. Um, I got introduced to him in 2009, and, uh, you know, we've had a up-and-down career. We've, we've won, won some big races and won a couple of Xfinity championships, and uh, my first race back with him, we won the Daytona 500. And our biggest, our biggest goal after that Daytona 500 was to keep this team relevant, and I told him, I said, man, we'll make it from this point on. We'll make it into the chase. I want to make it in on points, even if we didn't win the 500. And I think we went into Daytona in the fall, and we were 15th or 14th in points. So that, that meant a lot to us. It proved that it wasn't a one-race deal. This year we've actually had a lot of opportunities to do well. And, and, and just one thing after another, you know, I'm not the only team sitting up here telling you that they've had bad days. But I know that kid – uh, more than anybody I've spent more time with him um, we talk more than me and my family do and I know he's got my back and I got his back and I know he's going to give me 100% out there so the trust level uh, is through the roof and when we get to do something like this today it just I, 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 I couldn't be happier and I wouldn't want to do it with anybody else I will I, th I will end my career with Ricky if it's uh, next year or two years after that I'll, I'll this will be it for me all right, Mike, congratulations, thank and thank you for your time tonight. Thank you.